Far down in the romantic West Country, Will the accordion player grinds out his haunting old tunes to an audience which is composed of the last survivors of a great race of seamen. Will was a sailor himself once, but now he works in the pit at St. Austral, Cornwall, home of the China clay industry. St. Austral produces the best clay in the world, and it's shipped from there all over the world to make fine porcelain or the shiny pages of illustrated magazines. The pits are open quarries, which are still worked with the almost primitive gear that has been used since they began. The great white mounds of useless slag called burrows makes landmarks that are visible for miles out to sea. port of Charleston, it is taken east to the paper mills at the mouth of the Thames, or round Land's End to Runcorn near Liverpool, and thence by canal barge to the Potteries. The loading is done by hand. From lorries it goes down wooden chutes straight into the hold of the schooners. Great white chunks that almost look good enough to eat. For 60 years, the clay has been shipped in topsail schooners. Once there were hundreds, but now there are only half a dozen left. The children have even commemorated some of them in stone. In the nearby harbour of Pa, others, the Jane Banks and the Water Witch, are lying rotting on the mud, finished. No more will they heal gracefully over under the freshening breeze. They are gone, and their crews with them. Steam and motorcraft are rapidly taking the place of the schooners. Some, in a pathetic attempt to compete, have installed auxiliary machinery. One of these, the Mary Barrow, is walked out of Charleston Harbour. The lock gates open, and with most of the villagers lending a hand, she makes for the open sea, on her way this time to Glasgow. Watched by the regretful eyes of those for whom there are no ships, she makes her way slowly out into the bay. Past the headland, the breeze catches her, and she makes sail to the westward. But we go to London with the Katie, to Dartford Creek, to feed those huge paper mills, which turn out the paper, which you may have been looking at today. unloaded, there's a general clean-up. A sailor's proud of his home, and his home is his ship. The decks are scrubbed, the ropes coiled down, and when all is ship-shaped, she is towed out into the Thames to load with cement. With a new load, she can now make sail.
Katie once worked amongst the frozen Newfoundland banks. At another time, she bought pineapples and oranges from the sunny Azores. She has braved the storms of the wide Atlantic, but now her deep sea masts have been cut down and her last days are being spent in this backwater of industry, running between Foy and London. Anchors away, sir. Captain caught the skipper, astride steam as well as sail, but he's now back to his old love. And with all sails drawing, he leaves the factories and smoky chimneys far behind. The alert, a double topsail schooner reaching down channel with an offshore breeze on the beam. Alert is owned and loved by her skipper, Captain Dudridge, a great sailor with the poetry of the sea in his soul. He runs this schooner at a loss because he couldn't bear to see her hauled onto the mud like the water witch. For him, she's a person. She's alive, and who can say that he's wrong? slips along with a bone in her teeth. And as the evening drains the colour from the scene, we leave her, homeward bound. Farewell, Topsails.